Hey guys, I just got a sample of the Zoe ZT XR1 sent to me today in the mail, and yeah, I just want to do a bit of a run through, a demonstration of the different features on it. And some of the features on here are pretty cool. So it has a battery test mm -hmm. feature, which has a separate kind of plug in here. And yeah, I'll run through it and just show you, I guess, why it might be relevant for some of you who are maybe into DIY electronics, even flashlight testing like myself. I think this will definitely come in handy. So so this is the box that it comes in. So 25,000 counts, battery test, battery test multimeter, two in one. So yeah, basically it tests batteries and it also has your normal multimeter. So you include a whole bunch of different accessories and attachments. So that's just a USB-C charging cable. So basically the unit has a 2000 milliamp hour battery inside. It's just charged through the back there. You get your normal multimeter leads and they do come with these little caps on them so i've just taken them off you also get of course this plug here so it tests up to 100 volts a 100 volt battery so yeah up to that anyway so it just plugs in here and i'll just show you how that works a little bit later and you also get this temperature probe so yeah i'll show you how that works in a moment but basically plug that in and then it has a separate probe there which i've sticky taped to my nightcore edc 37 which i'll demo you also get this user manual and a carry case i did take this little port cover off as well but normally that just attaches on top there when in storage okay so let's go ahead and test out some batteries and basically this is a really really cool kind of port because you don't need to guess where the pins are so you see there's like a little notch here in the top so you just got to find where the notch uh, slides into on the device like that and just press down and it actually locks in place so there's like a retaining ring there so if you want to remove it you kind of got to pull that retaining ring uh, off like that and then plug back in there and it locks so it feels pretty sturdy and yeah you get a couple of these these clips here and i suppose these are for testing i guess designed for testing larger batteries like car batteries so you can like clamp them onto the positive and negative terminals now i don't have any large batteries the most the largest batteries that i have uh well they're not with me at the moment but yeah i've got an, an 18650 cell a couple of 21700 cells and this this old 18650 cell from Workhost that just refuses to charge. So, okay, so let's go ahead and test this 18650 cell. So I'm gonna try to get this underneath the terminal here. Oops, the right one, the red one for positive on that positive terminal. And let's connect the negative. I'm just gonna have to hold it down. And you can see here, 4.15 volts and uh, 37 milliohms so yeah basically i just brought up a, a chart on on gpt but you can also just search this up on google of the corresponding milli milliohm values based on you know how healthy or unhealthy the battery is so for an 18650 cell apparently 20 to 40 milliohms is excellent and yeah between 40 and 60 is good slash usable aging slash decline is 60 to 80 and poor slash replace soon is above 80 milliohms so this battery is looking actually pretty good and i've yeah i've had this battery for a long time i think geez i can't remember when i got this uh, this was probably with my convoy c8 a couple of years ago two and a half years ago uh, given i haven't used it a heap but still have discharged it at least five to ten times so yeah it looks like it's still pretty healthy now this one here i know there's something wrong with it because it just won't charge uh, it's a bit annoying that these clips won't really clip onto the positive and negative terminals so i'm just going to have to hold them down and hope for the best so let's check this one so there we go 1.38 oops it's fallen off the terminal let me just get that back on again yeah 1. Uh, 1.24 volts maybe if i hold it like right on the top it sort of changes the value like that a little bit yeah, just at the tip there. So 1.37 volts, 86 milliohms. So yeah, that's basically dead. So pour slash replace soon. This battery is gone. So yeah, I think this feature is really cool because it just identifies uh, how how far along the life cycle of the battery 
yeah, that the battery is, is on. So yeah, if you're getting close to maybe 80, you might think of maybe ordering some new batteries. Let's check this, these two 21700 cells. So plug that there. We'll clip that there, positive and negative. Let's just say Molly cell P42A. And yeah, this one's pretty good. Look at that, 4.15 volts. So yeah, it's pretty much fully charged, um, 11, 11 milliohms. So really that is, if we look at the 21700, so chart I have up here, so yeah, between 15 to 30 milliohms is excellent. So it's actually, it's actually even better than that. And when you have increased resistance in these cells, it means that the battery just can't deliver high current as efficiently, and it's going to heat up under load. And, you know, it, it also depends on the battery size. So, you know, larger batteries like these 21700s also have apparently a naturally lower resistance than 18650s. They just have more surface area, newer chemistry. Okay, now let's test this second one. And, yeah, very similar. Look at that. So 4.15 volts and 12... 12 milliohms. So I want to show you another feature now. So it's basically the temperature measurement feature. So if we hit, uh, press and hold this button here, we can swap into the multimeter function. And I'm just going to swap it into the temperature setting. So I think that's it there. And swap on the red leads. There and the black lead there. Pretty sure you can have both of these connected at the same time. <laughs> oh, we'll see. And yeah, basically I've got the the probe, which is just a bit of metal wiring uh, with a bit of solder on top connected to my Nikko EDC37. So yeah, I'm going to try to just test this and see how hot it gets. So it's actually measuring 27 degrees Celsius at the moment. So I'll put this up to the... Uh, 1500 lumen mode and you can see it also plots a little graph here so it hasn't really changed but it is showing an average 26.52 let's put it onto the lumen shield mode we'll just speed this up a little bit okay so there we go it's going up to 27 28 um Oh, but it's, uh, it's actually stopped me from activating it. As usual with night course, so 37 degrees Celsius. I'm just feeling it. It does feel, yeah, it does feel kind of hot. I think it's actually more than that. It's just taking a little bit of time for the, for the multimeter perhaps to catch up. Um, yep. Yeah, it's kind of interesting as well. You can see like it, the graph kind of runs from left to right, which is uh, right to left, which is kind of strange. See, it starts off really low and then it goes up. Now it's like 44 and like dropping a little bit strangely. And over here I have my Thermomaster P3 and you can see it's actually measuring slightly different. It's like 65, it seems to be picking up 65. Let me just flip it over like that and uh, put that cross over that same area I have the probe attached to 55 degrees Celsius it was about a 10 degree difference and I'm I'm pretty sure that's to do with the margin of error on the the device but also due to the emissivity value that I need to set this is an interesting material because it's made of I guess as a PVD material physical vapor deposition and it also is stainless steel so it's not like a usual material um, usually with aluminium I think it's an emissivity value of 0 0.98 so yeah I'm hoping to set that better on my on my Thermomaster P3, but you know, it's within the same kind of, uh, well, what, what, it, what you have it, same sort of limits range. And I'm just like, pressing it down to see maybe if it like makes better contact. Um, it does feel warm, but not really too hot. Um, unfortunately, I can't like really increase the temperature of this thing 
uh, pretty significant period of time because it just steps down. Now, I, I do have it on the 1500 lumen mode, though. You can see it kind of go up and down. But, you know, as you can see, it is it is certainly working. Okay, so I've just got these multimeter leads connected now. And this is the continuity indicator. You can see it here. And maybe I can find something, something metallic. This is here. There we go. We have continuity. It seems to, like, plot a little graph as well and um, has like a resistance readout okay and this is an sft40 on diode mode just lowered the camera brightness a little bit uh or the iso a little bit so you can see that the diode is lighting up and i actually thought i burnt this thing out uh, some smoke came out of this sft40 uh, from one of simon's previous torches and uh, still works still works it doesn't actually look physically damaged but some smoke came out of that torch and so i <laughs> Yeah, I, I've just taken this one out and replaced it with something else. But yeah, you can see the little readouts there as well. It's like a voltage readout. There's also a capacitor tester here, which I don't really use at all. And yeah, back to that temperature mode again. And yeah, it's like an auto... It's like an auto setting. So yeah, that's basically the end of this little demo. I think I'm going to be really using the battery function the most out of all these features and maybe the temperature probe as well. Though I have another Zoe multimeter that also comes with the temperature probe. So yeah, I'm just going to have to make sure that it's calibrated properly and yeah, essentially measuring the right temperature. So I need to look into the instructions a bit more. Either my, my camera is off, my thermal camera is off, or there's an issue with the with with the probe and the calibration but if you have any questions just let me know down in the comments below again i'm just an amateur kind of hobbyist kind of guy so i'm not a super technical kind of guy but i think this is going to be useful for some of you who like kind of tinkering around modifying things and yeah especially with your batteries as well and i a few years ago maybe a couple of years ago i took apart a dyson battery pack and you know was analyzing each individual battery using a, a charger my xtar vc8 but i think this would also be fantastic i'll be able to test each individual battery so i can find the bad battery in there maybe the, the one with the highest resistance ditch that one because often it's just one battery that's gone bad and the, the other batteries are, are fine to to use so yeah this is going to be a cool little feature it's going to make life a little bit easier